I don't know. What do I help me, Tom Cruise? I'm on fire. It's <laughs> <laughs> a big fire. Hey, race fans, welcome to Backseat Drivers. I am Alex Weaver, and before this past Sunday's race, it had been 11 times the number 48 had visited Victory Lane at Dover. For the 12th time, a new driver behind the wheel. First one at Dover for Alex Bowman, who leads a banner day for Hendrick Motorsports as they sweep the top four spots. First time an organization has finished one, two, three, four since 2005. Joining me virtually this week, both from Fox Sports, first up making her return to the back seat, my good friend Caitlin Vincy and America's crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Hey, you two. Thanks for joining me uh, on a Monday. Thank you for having us. Yes, it's great to do this show once again. And anytime I'm paired with Larry Mack, I'm always excited. But his stats book is much bigger than mine, so I have a feeling he might bury me on this show a little bit. Uh, no, don't no, cut never. yourself short. And don't cut yourself <laughs> short. Well, uh, regardless of notebooks, here's hoping we have half a good a show as Rick Hendrick did at Dover. Uh, talk about a day for Mr. H. But this is a segment, let's get right into it, we like to call left turn or right turn. Opposite directions may require opposite opinions. And obviously, let's lead off with Hendrick Motorsports. What a day for that organization and what a message it sends to the rest of the garage. Led every single lap at Dover but 18. Three of the four drivers have wins. So, Larry Mack, I'm starting with you on this one. What's the difference maker over there at HMS this year? Because uh, quite a statement. Yeah, when you see the turnaround that we've seen at Hendrick Motorsports over the last couple of years, I, I think it would be tough to say it's one thing. I, I think it's a multitude of things. We certainly, I think, saw this starting to happen last year with, of course, Alex Bowman getting his win early at Auto Club Speedway. Then William Byron makes the playoffs by winning at Daytona in August. And then, of course, Chase Elliott, the run that he and the nine team got on by winning three of the last five races and still in the championship. So I think we started seeing this happening last year. Chevrolet, the, the Camaro, they've made some changes. And I think all the Chevrolet teams are benefiting from that. But I still believe, you know, and nobody, no one walks around with a magic wand in their back pocket, but I do believe with Chad Knauss now focusing on all four teams and not just one team, that I think that is definitely making a difference that he's maybe making those guys, not saying they didn't work together good before, but I think he has really brought them together even closer, which uh, we know there's nobody stronger than everybody working together. KV, what's been the difference maker this year? I think it might be Chad Knauss' social media. It could be. I have very much enjoyed following Canals actually on social media and Twitter. Um, but to Larry's point, I think this is something that has been in the making for many, many years now. I think back to when the organization lost Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, obviously most recently, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Those are huge, big names in the sport, highly decorated race car drivers. They've been in a rebuilding phase for many years now, brought in a young crop of talent with Chase Elliott, William Byron, Kyle Larson, Alex Bowman. You're seeing all these drivers kind of coming into their own. They've made a lot of crew chief changes, swapped a lot of people around. And also to Larry's point, Chad Knauss now overseeing the group in a competition type role. All of these things are coming together at the right time. So I think we're seeing all the fruits of the labor for Hendrick Motorsports really evolving back into that powerhouse team that they were known so well for and I always tweet about the race at the end of the race and a fan tweeted me back last night saying this reminds me of a vintage Hendrick Motorsports and it kind of does they're getting back to those winning ways where we're consistently seeing them up front winning races multiple races so this team I would say safely is once again a powerhouse organization. An on-track performance, it's been Hendrick Motorsports recently that has shown up for the challenge. I think this answer may have been different if I asked both of you at the start of the 2021 season, but Larry Mack, out of the four drivers over at HMS, which one right now, halfway through the regular season, is the most equipped to compete for a championship come November? Yeah, I don't think you can ever take your eye off of Chase Elliott. We know he's not found victory lane. He's had a couple of second place finishes. But honestly, after 13 races, the, the driver, the team that just seems to have that speed week in and week out. Yeah, I know we continue to talk about the story of a second place finish, another second place finish, even though they did get the win at Las Vegas. But I just think Kyle Larson and, and, and Cliff Daniels and that five team, they just – They've got speed every type of racetrack that we go to, every aero package that we race. Uh, they've got to learn to close the deal. 
a little bit more than maybe what they do, which has kind of been the history of Kyle's career. But right now, if I had to pick just one, I'd probably look at that five car in Kyle Larson right now. KV, who you got over HMS? I do think Kyle Larson is a, is a good choice there for Hendrick Motorsports. I think, too, it's also easy to identify Alex Bowman potentially as that guy since he's the only – driver at Hendrick with multiple wins so far this season and when I look at that team as a whole they definitely have all the pieces in place to make it happen the driver has been on it the picker as we saw yesterday very strong Greg Ives his crew chief on top of the pit box has won championships in the Xfinity series helped guide Jimmy Johnson to a number of his titles in the cup series as an engineer so the depth is there on that race team for them to potentially contend but I do believe Chase Elliott uh, the second half of the year, we always see this team kind of come into their own. Characteristically, that is where Chase Elliott and the nine team really come alive. We saw it last season. We know that he can win at Phoenix. He did it last year. He made it to the championship four. That is the same place where the season finale is set, where the title will be determined. I do think Chase Elliott is going to be the guy. I know he hasn't won this year, but everybody just calm down. He's going to be there. I think it's Chase <laughs> Yeah, only 13 races in, no pressure yet. Uh, well, Caitlin mentioned that pit crew over there on the 48th, fastest pit stop all season long, so want to give uh, kudos to that team. Definitely a good week for them. But now the award that you do not want, this week's Going the Wrong Way Award. Uh, two drivers that we're kind of looking at here. Trouble early for Kyle Busch at Dover, had those engine problems, the mechanical issues. And then the guy that everybody had circled to win this race, Martin Truex Jr., started on the pole, just kept trending in the opposite direction all day long. Kyle Busch finished ooh, 27th. Martin Truex Jr., the 19th, finished 19th. Uh, KV, who are you most surprised at having a rough day at it at Dover? Well, you said it. Everybody circled MTJ as the guy to watch going into this race. He was probably my biggest surprise. The reason I say that is because how strong they've been, obviously, throughout the course of the year. Three wins already. He's won three times at that track, his home track, one of like 15. And we always expect <laughs> that Martin is going to be strong when we go to Dover. But right from the get-go, they started going the wrong way. From my understanding, just really missed the setup, said they weren't even in the ballpark at all, which I know is frustrating from, for that group because they always have the bar and expectations set very high when they go there. So certainly, uh, Martin Truex Jr., I think, was the biggest surprise out of those two for me. Larry Mack, two heavy hitters, the 18 or the 19. Yeah, you know, I can't really say the 18 team had a bad day. Yeah, the, when you look at their finish and you look at what went on, but that was not self-inflicted. That was nothing uh, that, that Kyle Busch did. It was nothing his team did. Ben Bayshore, the crew chief, it was engine-related, and they were able to rectify it. I do think Kyle Busch was going to run well yesterday, but I would say I was probably more surprised – at Martin Trex Jr. and the 19 team's performance than I was Hendrick finishing one, two, three, four. Because everybody, on, I think on my 13 Zoom production calls last week, prior to <laughs> over, I said, just look back at who ran well at Darlington, and I can promise you that's going to be the same players that we see at Dover. It's the same arrow package. There's just, there are some similarities, and we saw it with Kyle Larson. But Martin Trex Jr., just not only how he's run this year, especially with the Cerro package, but look at his last four Dover races prior to yesterday, a win and three second place finishes. I was totally, and I'm sure they were too, totally caught off guard with the performance of that 19 team. I think we all were. Uh, now let's get a little bit of a fuel for the rapid fire. We're all hungry for some more racing and this in the drive through short and sweet answers. First up, let's start with Slick Bill. I think that's what the cool kids are calling him. And if they're not, they are going to be after they look at the finishes that the number 24 has rattled off. William Byron, 11 top 10 finishes in a row. Lately, they're becoming top fives. Does the streak continue this weekend? Heading to a little road course in Austin, Texas. Larry Mack, Willie B, keeps it going, yes or no? I want it to continue, but streaks are made to come to an end. Unfortunately, I've just got no. this gut feeling that this is going to be the end of the road for the top 10 finishes for William Byron. I think they're going to be solid, but I just got this feeling this is going to be it. KV, give me something positive. <laughs> I'm going to disagree with Larry, which actually kind of breaks my heart. I don't like to disagree with him, but I'm going to say it continues. And it's been so fun to watch William Byron and Rudy Fugel, his new crew chiefs this season, what they've been able to do. Obviously not new to each other. We know what they accomplished together in the truck series, but 
they have just been a model of consistency. And also when I look at William Byron's numbers at the road courses, not a lot of top fives, but he has had four top tens at the road courses, which is all he needs to keep the trend going. So I think he gets another top 10 and we see the streak continue on. All right. Well, they are also one win away from tying Petty Enterprises for most all-time wins. The number to tie is 268. HMS is sitting at 267 now with Bowman's latest win on Sunday at Dover. So this season, do they pass? Do they tie? Larry Mack, what do you think? In 2021, they probably will pass them before we finish up with our NASCAR on Fox season. <laughs> We've got three more races the way they're going. We know we're headed to Dakota, where obviously we... Chase Elliott's going to be one of the favorites. Charlotte Motor Speedway, I think they'll all run well there. So, yeah, unfortunately for Petty Enterprises, we, we have all the respect in the world, and what that organization has accomplished over the decades is amazing, but I'm afraid that record is going to go down and go down soon. Katie? Hey. I got to agree with Larry once again. I think they surpass it this season based on what they've been doing already this year. It would be hard pressed to believe they won't be able to get two more victories this year, which is all they need to surpass it. And once they do, what an incredible moment that will be for that race organization passing a record that's been longstanding in the sport forever. So good for them when it does occur, but I think definitely it's going to happen this season. All right, I'm adding to the agreement. I'm agreeing with the two of you, but now let's get into uh, this upcoming weekend. It's going to be pretty exciting. First time a NASCAR series has raced at the Circuit of the Americas. What does the trend notebook like this week? It's uh, pretty empty, right? It's a blank sheet of paper for <laughs> me too. So yeah, I'm going to start creating trends this weekend, but like everybody, all the teams, everybody involved, it's a clean sheet of paper. I, there's a, the, the, the drinking word of the weekend will be unknown. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, one thing that will help that notebook out, not just for Larry Mack, but for the teams and the drivers' notebooks as well, practice and qualifying, welcome back. Only 50 minutes for practice, but hey, KV, 50 minutes is more than we're used to. How will teams uh, use this practice in the qualifying session? Yeah, absolutely. Welcome back is right, because we don't get many practice sessions anymore. And you know, it's hard to believe there could be a blank sheet of paper in Larry's notebook, but anyways, we know there won't be <laughs> after the weekend. But practice is better than none. So I think this is going to be beneficial, but it, it's going to be a bit of a scramble. It's not a lot of time. Uh, teams are going to be really trying to, to get it right pretty quickly. I think, though, anything is better than nothing and just getting an opportunity for these drivers to try and get acclimated to the racetrack. Many of them obviously has, have never raced there in any type of race vehicle. So that practice, it will be valuable. Um, but to your point, I am so excited about this race, but I think there's been so much uh, anticipation for it for a while now, and I can't wait to see the cars go out, even for a practice session. Everyone's going to be watching this. <laughs> yeah, practice. What, what is that? We don't even know what that is anymore. Larry Mack, how are the teams going to use that 50 minutes? Can you say 50 pounds put into a five-pound bag? <laughs> I hope the bag doesn't bust. <laughs> the agendas, they're going to be all over the place. The crew chief, is more, he's going to want to get in there and make changes to the race car. The driver's going to be saying, I'm just trying to find my way around this 20 turn road course. So, yeah, the driver's going to just make laps, make laps, make laps. The crew chief's going to want to make changes. And remember this track position, I'm sure, is going to be keen, just like it always is at a road course. So, you want to qualify up front. So, not only in that 50 minutes of practice, so you're trying to get your car ready to race. You're trying to get your driver acclimated to this road course that he's never been on before. You're also going to see how fast can we run to get a good qualifying lap because you want to start up near the front. I think this is one reason why we're seeing a lot of the cup drivers that will be participating in the Xfinity Series race on Saturday. Tyler Reddick, Kyle Busch, uh, Cole Custer, just to name a few, just trying to get more reps at this road course. Yeah, uh, more reps, I think, is going to be key. Well, uh, speaking of more reps, he did have a little bit of testing time there at Coda earlier this season. But I'm still surprised when I say this. The number nine fans are still waiting on that first win of the 2021 season. The road course ace is probably expected to maybe win on Sunday. He did have some testing time, as I mentioned before. So does the first win come at Coda, KV? 
I think that it does. I think the nine fans can will finally be able to breathe a sigh of relief after we leave Austin, Texas. I just think when you look at his numbers on the road courses, it's it's hard to argue against Chase Elliott. Uh, yes, granted, we've never been there, but he's a guy who I feel like can, can figure it out quickly. So Chase is someone I expect to be there right from the get-go of that race. I'm going to go Chase Elliott, a uh, little precursor maybe for my picks, but I think he gets it. Blair <laughs> Mack, how do you feel about the nine? Well, I know everybody is ready to engrave the trophy for Chase Elliott as we go to Coda <laughs> because he has become the king of the road per se. Uh, but this is, as I said earlier, a clean sheet of paper. It, it's a road course that we've never been to. Now, I do know Chase Elliott, along with Mark Trix Jr., Brad Keselowski. They did the test there several weeks ago, so I think that certainly helps those three drivers and those three teams right there. But I actually talked to Martin Trex Jr. And we know he'll be going for three in a row at Sonoma when we go there in a few weeks. And he always runs well at Watkins Glen. And he said, Coda is like taking a little bit of Sonoma and putting it in a bowl and a little bit of Watkins Glen and putting it in a bowl, mixing it up. And it kind of comes out Coda. I think Martin Trex Jr. is going to be strong there. But, you know, we all had Chase Elliott winning our first road course of the year at Daytona, and rightly so. He won there when we were there in 2020, but it was Christopher Bell that actually pulled into victory lane. So, yeah, we may talk about Chase Elliott. We may talk about Mark Drex Jr. and some others, but we may get another surprise winner like we saw there at Daytona with Christopher Bell. Hey, I love it. Don't count anybody out when it comes to Circuit of the Americas. Um, okay, always the best time when I get to hang with you guys. Larry Mack, before I let you guys go, how many days until Coda? How many days until Coda? Well, I guess that would be six days until Coda. It will actually be four days until we have vehicles on track practicing and qualifying. Woohoo, can't wait. You heard the man, Austin, get ready to get weird. NASCAR is coming to town. Tune in this Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1. These two will have all the coverage all week long leading up to the big race on Sunday. And we'll see you right back here after Coda.